Hi everyone, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we are going to be taking a look at the biggest of the big navvies and that is the 6900 XT. AMD would like you to part with a thousand pounds or $999 because we haven't got a GBP price at the time of making the video. Uh, but they would like you to part with that much money for this graphics card in this state. Obviously the aftermarket versions will come out and they will bump the price up that little bit more. And it's also going to depend how many of them end up in the shops because we've had a lot of st stuff happen lately where none of the brands have been able to get enough stuff even remotely to meet demand. So yeah, a thousand pound AMD graphics card. It's certainly been a long time since we've had something like that. There's quite a few of these graphs where it sits at the top. So yes, other than the fact that I'm not going to go over what's under the hood too much, the, there's a couple of, the surprising thing I think was they stuck with 16 gigabyte VRAM, but I think that was more because it's kind of an updated 6800 XT in reality. I mean, these two cards are so similar, it's, it's quite mad. But I did actually manage for the first time to get the uh, RGB software working. So the light on the side of the card can change colour. Now, it's basically, it looks exactly the same as this. But when we pop the old price graph up, don't forget, by the way, you can go to the OC3D website and look at lots more graphs. But I've got some very positive graphs here, but I've also got a couple of little negative things to say, as we always would do. But I do stress, I think you're going to be surprised with my conclusion. So pricing. It's obviously a fair whack more expensive than the 6800 XT. Uh, and we've left the NVIDIA one in there at the top. Because at the end of the day, I personally see the 6900 XT being what the 3090 is to the 3080. So the 6800 XT here, sensible kind of money, uh, £650 if you can find them at that price or even if you can find them. Uh, and then you get the £1,000, it's a big old step up. And what we're here today is really to find out if you should be buying that one, or if you should be buying that one. Because we don't particularly need to go too much into the green team stuff. I'm very much into the difference between these two. And when you look at power draw, because it's obviously, they were both said to be uh, 300 watt cards, which actually kind of surprised me, because it made me think that they it was going to be massively power limited. And you can see here that with the uh, overclock, it randomly ended up drawing less power. So you're gonna think that I've done something wrong at this point, but we can get straight into the overclocking because normally with an overclock, you go in, you play with the power slider a little bit, and I'll, I'll tell you real quickly what I do is I move the power slider up and I'll keep running a benchmark and a game because if you overclock too far, what you can find out is you'll get negative results and your scores and your frames per second can actually drop. That actually did happen with this. So if you turned the power dial all the way to the end, you actually started to get a little bit of negative impact going on. So it goes from, it starts at zero, but it's in the middle, so you can underdo it as well. Um, and uh, I, I, I was, it was doing really well at about 10, but then what I ended up doing is, a, yeah, I did jump to 15 and the scores went down, so I put it back to 10. But then I actually started undervolting it as well. Now in the software, it standard comes out at 1175 uh, millivolts, so 1175 millivolts. I ended up backing it off and I actually got it up, down, sorry, to a even 1100 millivolts. If you went much further past that, I started getting some possible crashing problems with uh, the game. So I ended up going back to 1100 millivolts. Then I did another cheeky little bump on the power boost as well. And I ended up with 1100 millivolts, so an undervolt for that. But then I had the power percentage at uh, 12, and that was the best I got it. Now I didn't do a full suite of tests with it in the overclock mode, but you'll see there are a few of them in here and you'll see the ones that, that are in here, they've done quite well. 
Um, it's just because it takes us an entire day to do one set of tests on a graphics card. And we just didn't have enough time to do that, the review, the written, and everything. But anyway, so power draw, overclocking it actually meant it drew less power. With the uh, fan settings and stuff as well, it's you, you can just kind of leave it to its own devices. One of the things I like personally in the software is you can set a maximum fan speed. So it still does all the automatic stuff, but if you want to raise the limit a little bit more, you can effectively basically just offset your uh, fan profile. And I actually think that's a really nice touch. You don't have to go all out if you don't want to. Uh, and if it was me with this, I'd probably end up setting the maximum about 65%. Even with the overclock, it will run away with the fairies and it will be uh, great. Now, the game's results I'm going to show you now are very positive. And I've picked them for that uh, point. Uh, so Gears 5, straight away, you can see the overclock, because I did do an overclock on Gears 5, and I believe I did an overclock on Dirt as well, um, as well as the synthetics, which I will show you at the end. Uh, but uh, let's have a look. Yeah, we did one on Dirt as well. But Gears, it did very, very well in Gears. The AMD graphics cards do seem to be liking Gears at the moment, but this one specifically got in there and mixed in with the 3090s. It's also why I've started with this game, because it's actually a really nice, positive thing that I can say that there are titles out there where the £1,000 card is trading blows and punches with a uh, £1,500 card. Uh, but you do have to take it with a kind of a pinch of salt in that it's not consistently that way, but we're, we're fairly happy for it. F1 2020 is also a game that the 6900 adores. It's actually a game that the whole Navi range um, absolutely adore. They've all been incredibly strong in this and it does seem to be something that the newer titles are incredibly enjoying the architecture and the older titles maybe not so much. It could be that they just need uh, a few tweaks, it might be driver stuff that they have to do. I would assume that it's going to be game updates but that's obviously got the possibility of like never happening. Dirt 5, again, cracking scores on this one. Uh, we've only had this one recently as well, which is why you'll see there aren't a great deal of the big Nvidia cards in, because I've just not gone back in to retest them. So these are the graphics cards that we have actually tested since we've had the game, which is why you see the 3060 Ti's. So the 3090 may top this graph. It's just not in there because, like I said, we haven't retested it. So don't go thinking I'm trying to make AMD look amazing or anything like that. Uh, Borderlands 3. This is also a game where it fared very well. Now, you can see that there's a 3090 at the top. But it's also, I would uh, draw your attention to really where some of the um, 6800 XTs kind of sit in there and the frames per second differences between them as well. So this is where we get a little bit more balanced, is what I would say. Now, I do have a synthetic result, which I will show you in a second. So it's times by and times by extreme. But effectively, we can kind of break into a bit of a conclusion with this because I could stand here and talk to you for hours about it. But at the end of the day, I personally think that the, uh, the only problem that the uh, 6900 XT has got in reality is the baby brother, is the 6800 XT, because this was such a cracking little card for the money that it, then with the big price jump, it makes it kind of difficult to kind of see where the money is going in reality. But it was the same thing that we had when we went from the 3080 to the 3090. Uh, and I don't want to go back and end up reviewing the 3090 again, but there's a little bit less going on to kind of give you the extra uh, need to go and buy it uh, between these two. So these two are a lot closer than the other ones. Uh, and effectively, the other ones was all kind of like future tech and like massive resolutions and all of that sort of stuff, whereas this isn't. But something I will say, based on the, what we've seen so far, and we also know that we've got the, the consoles that are going to be finding their way out and the games that are coming through, is in reality, the AMD cards, it's kind, you're kind of sort of 
hoping that they're going to get better with time. And that's not because they're bad now, but it's just because there is a lot of stuff that could be coming that could make a huge difference. So for argument's sake, DirectX Ultimate, for example. Um, I personally do not think the ray tracing is going to get in orders of magnitude better. I don't think it's going to get them up near the competition. So if ray tracing is your thing, then they, they just haven't performed particularly well with that. They're like the old 2000 series NVIDIAs at this present moment in time. Maybe the software updates and optimizations will help with that, but then that could end up offloading so that you end up doing a lot more CPU bound tasks. But then if you think about it, because of the direct access memory, you could end up using the CPU and firing uh, that data between the GPU memory. And it's all one of those ones where it's kind of, yeah, but if this, if that, and it's very much like that, but AMD graphics cards do seem to mature like fine wine much better than the NVIDIAs to the point where the, the memes go crazy about driver updates, gimping cards and all of that sort of stuff. And I'm not saying that happens. And I do think it's particularly um, overly enthusiastic people that drive that kind of uh, message, but they do seem to do better as things move along. Um, and one of the things I want to show you here is the 3 Mark Time Spy result. So you can see here that it's actually done fairly well with uh, the overclocks and uh, but there's, there's something specifically here that I did want to show you and that is uh, quite how well a decent aftermarket card can perform. Now I have only reviewed one so far and it was the XFX Merc. If I was going to have a 3019, you end up getting a reference one, then I completely understand that you're going to go and buy the best that you possibly can do, and you are kind of investing in stuff in hope that the consoles are going to make things better. They are still incredibly, incredibly, uh, the competition is there. There's certain places where the AMDs are strong, there's certain places where the greens are strong. It's really nice. There's a decent amount of competition in there. But if you were to mix in these three cards, in the fact that this one come in at about £800, this was 650 this was, let's say, $999, let's call it £1,000. I'm going to be quite surprising for you guys here and say that if it was me, based on what I've seen in the results with the FPS and that sort of stuff, I'd probably end up going and buying a really nice, uh, well-designed aftermarket card overclocking the bejesus out of it. Make sure you get a good cooler. It's perfectly fine on air, but for those of you out there that like your water cooling, they don't get massively hot, but you know, at the end of the day, you can make it look pretty. And I'd probably buy one of these, save a little bit of money on the graphics card, and then go and buy a 5000 series AMD CPU uh, with the money that I saved if I haven't already got one. Um, and normally we would say spend more money on your graphics, but because of the gap between the two, it's actually a hard sell because there, there, there hasn't been a huge step between the graphics cards. Um, so it's quite a uh, strange conclusion we compare to reference and then you end up picking up an aftermarket. Now the XFX was strong. I haven't had any other aftermarket cards through yet, but obviously as we do, they'll get put in the graphs and we can see. Other thing to remember though, is we also haven't had any aftermarket 6900 XTs and we do know they are coming now. Uh, there was you know, a bit of wondering whether it was going to happen or not, but it is gonna happen. So it'll be interesting to see what XFX or the likes of Sapphire and the like might end up doing with their big daddy cards. But I definitely think it's going to be worth a look, but we also know it's going to bump that price up. And then that's, that could end up make these look even more appealing. It's kind of like the Goldilocks effect. In that, when you have a really expensive product at the top of the pack, it then makes the ones that are a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier to get hold of, uh, it makes them look that much nicer. And I think that's very much what's going on with these. So I don't have anything massively negative to say. It's just with a balanced mind 
and some honesty and not just going, oh, thousand pound graphics card, it's amazing. When you actually think about, wow, what would I spend my money on? It would probably be something like that. But I will leave that all with you. I'd love to know your thoughts underneath. Don't forget you can go to the Overclock 3D website where you can go and pick through the ray tracing results and stuff if you like. It wasn't that great, I have already said about it, but I didn't want to make this about uh, beating them up because they've done an incredible job. But it does feel like at the end of the day, the 6900 XT is not enough between that and the 6800 XT and I would end up favouring the cheaper of the two out of them, which is probably quite surprising because I'm sure as a hardware enthusiast, I'm meant to just lust after the more expensive one all the time. But randomly, I'm not. So I think that what that does show is that this isn't a bad card. It just shows that how good that was and how strong the pricing was on that. That it then meant that the aftermarket cards actually do, in this scenario, start to make a lot of sense. So I will leave that with you. I would love to hear your thoughts again underneath. And I'm also kind of uh, looking forward to now seeing what the aftermarket 6800 vanilla cards end up coming through with, because that could also upset it even more. But this has been the tiniest one. Thank you for watching. And I will be back with another video for you very soon. Ding! Love you, sis.